Hi everyone, this is Ryan from RPNT Dossier, and today we're going to be talking about the drug diazepam, also known by the brands Valium or Diastat. You can use the timestamps in the video description to jump ahead. Diazepam belongs to the benzodiazepine drug classification, sometimes just called benzos for short. Benzodiazepines work by enhancing the effects of the inhibitory neurotransmitter called gamma-aminobutyric acid, more commonly known as GABA. Now, that's a lot to take in, so let's break down what all of that means. So in our body, we have neurons that transfer information throughout the entire brain and body. And the way that this information gets from neuron to neuron is through electrical signals, which we call action potentials. These action potentials are vital in the transfer of information throughout the body. We also have neurotransmitters, which influence these action potentials. We have excitatory neurotransmitters and inhibitory neurotransmitters. To simplify things, we'll say that these little yellowish red circles here are the excitatory neurotransmitters. You can think of excitatory neurotransmitters as the ones that are excited, the ones that are promoting or stimulating action potentials. So they are exciting or encouraging whichever neurons that they're acting on. This means that information can travel more easily or more quickly from neuron to neuron. And inhibitory neurotransmitters are the opposite. They are kind of like the downers, the ones that slow down or prevent action potentials. The neurotransmitter called GABA is actually the main inhibitory neurotransmitter in the central nervous system, or CNS. So GABA is kind of like the big downer of the nervous system. Again, just to simplify things, let's say that GABA are these little green dots. GABA reduces the excitability of neurons, which slows down the transfer of information. One more time, let's just review all of that. So benzodiazepines, like diazepam, work by enhancing GABA. So diazepam enhances the main downer of the nervous system, which results in all sorts of inhibitory effects throughout the body, including sedation, drowsiness, decreased anxiety, muscle relaxing effects, and much more. Now that we know how diazepam works, it's a lot easier to work through what it's used for. Diazepam is often used as an anxiolytic for the symptomatic treatment of mild to moderate anxiety. It can be used in combination with other medications to manage seizure disorders. Seizures occur during the abnormal excitation of neurons in the brain. So it makes sense that diazepam, a drug that inhibits neuron activity, works to treat those excitable neurons, again by slowing down the electrical activity of the brain. Diazepam is available rectally as a gel for treatment of certain acute refractory seizures. Diazepam rectal gel has an onset of approximately 2 to 10 minutes, which is much faster than oral diazepam, which has an onset of about 30 to 60 minutes. For additional information on diazepam rectal gel, like how to use it, dosing, and more, I've placed a link in the video description that covers it very thoroughly. Diazepam can also be used in acute alcohol withdrawal, for preoperative anxiety, and as a muscle relaxant for relief of skeletal muscle spasms of various causes. Some off-label uses include insomnia, agitation, and more. Many of diazepam side effects relate to how benzos work, which is essentially as a central nervous system depressant. CNS depression may present as sedation, dizziness, weakness, unsteadiness, and more. Severe CNS depression can eventually lead to loss of consciousness, coma, and death. There are many other possible side effects, just some of which include hypotension, respiratory depression due to CNS depression, suicidal ideations, which are very important to watch for, tachycardia, drug dependence and tolerance, and many more. Diazepam is contraindicated in patients with hypersensitivity to benzodiazepines. Also avoid use in patients with narrow angle glaucoma, as diazepam may increase intraocular pressure in rare cases. Diazepam should not be given to those with severe liver disease or to patients with myasthenia gravis. Myasthenia gravis is a neuromuscular disease that causes muscle weakness, which may be potentiated by diazepam. Precaution should be used in patients with a history of addiction and patients with suicidal ideations. Also, exercise caution in patients with respiratory disease, like COPD or sleep apnea, due to the risk of respiratory depression, in patients with renal impairment, and in elderly patients. In these patients, doses may have to be lowered. Always remember to assess and monitor for side effects of diazepam. Especially watch for CNS depression, suicidal ideations, and signs of dependence or tolerance. Be aware that there are many interactions with diazepam, which may increase or decrease its effectiveness. 
Other CNS depressants, like opioids and alcohol, may increase the effects of sedation and respiratory depression, which can be life-threatening. When a patient first starts on diazepam, ensure that they have proper support to assist with ambulation and other activities of daily living. This will help with drowsiness and dizziness, and will help reduce the risk of falls, especially in elderly patients. To avoid withdrawal symptoms, do not discontinue diazepam abruptly, but instead gradually taper the dose according to the provider's instructions. Lastly, for treatment of overdose, a benzodiazepine antagonist, such as flumazenil, may be used as an antidote. Flumazenil blocks or inhibits GABA receptors, reducing the symptoms of overdose. And that's about it for the basics of diazepam. If you have any questions or would like me to cover a specific drug or topic, please let me know in the comments and thanks for watching.